Welcome back to Football HQ with Coach Keithley. I'm glad you're at the channel if you're new here. Uh, my name is Jonathan Keithley. I'm a head football coach in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Um, this is my channel. I'm just trying to share some football knowledge and join the discussion online. I think there's a great wealth of knowledge to be found on YouTube and social media and everywhere else. It's a great place to share football knowledge, as it, like everything else, is at an all-time high. And uh, there's great things to learn, so just trying to do a little bit of my part. So today we're going to talk about the Baylor offense from the mid-2000, or mid-2010s, excuse me, 2014 to be exact. They had one of the great, greatest seasons they've ever, they had ever had. Kendall Bryles was the offensive coordinator, and yes, there was a lot of things behind the scenes that we don't like about Baylor football in this time period, but I'm just here to talk about the X's and O's of it, um, and Kendall Bryles, especially as the offensive coordinator. So we're going to look at um, some different parts of their game against TCU in 2014. One of the most epic games in college football history. 61 to 58 was the final score. Um, Baylor won on a last second field goal, but they had to overcome a three touchdown deficit in the fourth quarter. And how they did that is pretty amazing. And that'll be my next video, is how they made this comeback and what was their strategy. But we're gonna look at their opening two drives and what they had scripted. I think it's important to see what does the coach script? Like what are they trying to do? If you're an offensive, offensive coordinator, um, look at what guys script and what they're trying to accomplish in their first few drives. So we're going to see that Baylor didn't move the ball probably as well as they wanted to, but they're going to end up scoring 61 points and make some great adjustments. So let's um, take a look at that right now. Again, I do have this playbook available below, um, as well as an Oklahoma playbook from one of their games against Kansas State two years ago. So a lot of work goes into those, so I just ask for you know, a little bit to recover a little bit of money from it. Just send it to me um, online. Uh, so if that's something you're interested in, click check below in the description. Otherwise, hang around and let's talk about Baylor 2014. This was one of the great games really in college football in the last decade. Baylor is going to win this game 61 to 58. In this video, we're going to take a look at their opening two drives, which really weren't that impressive. But you're going to see um, how Bryles is going to make some minor adjustments um, to what Gary Patterson, who's a defensive um, kind of a genius in the 4-2-5. Um, he has a great game plan defensively to start the game, but it's not going to end up uh, very well. Obviously, he's going to get up 61 points. So let's go to the game right now. Let's look at the first two drives that Baylor has. We'll look at the play, and then we'll watch the all 22 wide and um, end zone film. So we look at the first play. You see Baylor just got kind of a curl flat concept. They're going to come out in an 11 personnel with a tight end. Um, they do a lot of tight end in the game, but they don't throw their tight end very much. Um, the first drive um, is kind of a good feeling out session, and I like to see what did Kendall Browse script compared to how he adjusts later on. So here's the first play. Um, a lot of play action from Baylor. Um, this first drive has a little bit of drop back, but as the game goes on, you're going to see mostly play action passes off of their running game that really hits its stride. Okay, you see Baylor out in the field from the first and 10. They've got their tight end to the short side of the field, and quarterback number 14, the name is Petty, is going to look, you see right there off his play fake to the weak side. He just throws a real quick speed out to his tight end. Looks to me like he was reading the corner who is pressed up. And perhaps so he's reading him to see if he wants to throw the speed out or the vertical. I think as soon as he gets a bail, he throws the speed out. Covered pretty well by, by TCU, really, but a good completion for a nice first down pickup. Here you'll see Baylor's pass protection. All right. And most of the time, not here, most of the time you're going to see more of a, a, a full slide, except for the in-man line of scrimmage. Here you don't see that, but you'll see a lot of full slide later on in the game. Good protection, gets the ball out quickly, just easy completion, um, good gain on first down. So simple play to start the game. Second down, they're going to stack their receivers and go back to the play action look. Um, he's got a couple of curls kind of over the middle of the field. Um, also, as a, they're going to try this, this vertical seam right here. They try to hit this a lot down the, down the numbers. Um, they're, they're, they get an inside release from their second receiver in the stack, and but then he tries to get vertical. Okay, there you see the stacked receivers. Okay, TCU. Now you notice that Baylor's going very quickly. This is this is all scripted drive. They've practiced it. They're going very quickly trying to get TCU off balance, but they do change the protection at the last second. There's a little minor play fake. 
Again, here's that little curl, but then behind it is, is this little seam up the, I call it a seam, but just kind of an inside vertical up the numbers. And look, he's open. The corner goes with this little, or excuse me, the safety goes with this little curl. And if he can get it out with a flat-footed safety, he's got something. But the protection breaks down. He's already had to bail out. And uh, he does a good job to uh, just get close to the first down. And I do want you to notice one thing here. Baylor's reads, one thing I can tell is the effort of the receivers. Some guys know they're not getting the ball, and it shows. Now here, these guys are giving a little bit of effort, but not really. They're not trying to get open. So it tells me this is a, a two-man read for the quarterback. And most of the night, that's what's going to happen. You can tell when they know they're not getting the ball, which as a coach, I wouldn't like my guys giving that effort. But as a guy trying to kind of translate the offense, you can see uh, you know, where the quarterback is looking. So here's the end zone view. You can see where – I'll show you where – the breakdown comes in the protection. So right now TCU is just doing a, a typical three technique with a, with a, a one shade right here. But later on, they're gonna change their front a little bit. So they do a slide here and he should slide over to this A gap. You've got three blockers that miss number 57 between the center of the guard and the running back. Running back at the last second tries to pick him up, but that's not a good matchup for him. These two linemen should have communicated better. Um, neither one of them is blocking anyone. Uh, they fix that very quickly. The running back does pick him up. So Petty really could have stepped up in the pocket and, uh, and delivered his throw, but he escapes and, and does get something out of it. But I, I think you show him on, the, on, on a film that he, he could have escaped a different way. Escaping up is almost always better if you can. Very quickly, we've got a third down play, and um, they're just going to look for this little quick stick route behind a block right here. So he's going to run another play fake. And, excuse my dog. And... Uh, Hush, run a little play fake. And that some people would complain that there's a little bit of blocking before the ball is caught. I would complain if I was on defense, but nothing gets called here. Notice the receivers are stacked up here. All right, you've got trips look, but with a stack. So he's just gonna go block this guy and they're gonna throw, go right behind him with the throw. Play fake draws those linebackers, which is important. So really notice he's kind of engaged before the ball's gotten there. It is beyond the line of scrimmage, not by much. Um, so they get a first down. So well executed play, and if they're going to let you do it, you do it. Protection, again, there's that full slide to the right with the – to their right, our left, and then the weak side or the single um, in middle line of scrimmage matches up with the end. Get it out quickly, first down. So good execution for Baylor on their first series to get a – Initial first down of the game. I see a lot when they run the ball. There's not, I don't remember much inside zone or, or, or ISO. It is they are pulling the guard or tackle every time, depending on the alignment of the defensive front. So we're going to start, by, they're going to pull the tackle a lot. And there's a lot of RPOs tagged to this. Um, this is the first one that we'll see. Um, he has the ability to throw the quick screen. Could be, it's a pre, a, probably a pre snap RPO here. These quick screens are, I think. And then they do have some post-snap RPOs where they're reading the safeties that we'll talk about later. Um, so let's go to that. Okay, first and 10, you just got a, a basic two by two set. Gonna pull the weeks, the, the tackle to the short side. Now, you can tell it's a pre-snap read because he doesn't even give the play much time and he has the ball out. So he, he likes the fact, you know, or perhaps, you know, he is, he's going off this, this blitz right here, but I think he likes the numbers that he sees. Okay, you've got a six man box basically versus just a, a two over one right here. So he throws it and it's incomplete. Not a very good throw and it would have been tackled for a very short game. So they're gonna come back to this later, but let's see what would have happened had he given it off. A lot of people call this dart when you pull a tackle. Watch, watch how well this aligned. Now, again, notice the defensive, the defensive front. This is, again, they have both, both tackles in the A gap here. It's a little bit different, kind of double one set. Okay, they blocked down really well. There's a pull on 54. Look what would have happened had he given it off. I mean, that's a pre-snap read. I see why he read it, but um, I'm sure they come. They, they figured this out pretty quickly that that play would have been there big time. Um, just block down and, and pull the tackle. It's kind of like power, but dart when it's with the tackle usually is how is how I've heard the vocabulary. So second and ten, they're going to go back to empty, and they're going to kind of have a little bit of a stack over here, and they are going to stack them up over here. And again, they try to either with one of these two is to get inside and, and, and get a get a vertical route. Here they're attacking the middle of the field. All right, looks to me like it would be a high, low read. Um, kind of hard. They go in quickly. Again, 
pretty deep zone here for TCU. You've got cover four quarters look, nobody blitzing, so dropping seven into coverage. And what you might see is, you know, a pretty good, a pretty good space right here for the safety. Two defenders on this first um, kind of deeper square in, and then underneath you've got a good throw. I would tell them to throw that. Now there is a little danger here, but you, you throw it right. You kind of throw it right into those numbers here. You'd be okay. Weak side, he's not looking that way. So again, just tells me this is a one, uh, you know one side of the field read. Although they are running hard, so they could. But he decides to throw the deep ball, and he just misses it. One on one, just a little bit overthrown. So um, both were open actually. The protection is good. And again, you see we're four of them sliding to the right, backside's locked up. All kinds of time. Again, if you just throw that ball out here a little bit, he's got something, but he just missed it. So I see why he's throwing it. And Baylor's going to take shots with their deep passing. So a false start penalty makes it third and 15 from their own 29. And uh, you see you've got. Um, an empty set again, a couple verticals, three of them, and then kind of a bender over the middle with a curl underneath. And again, with 15 yards to go, um, you know, if you're going to get the first down, you're going to have to, you know, throw, throw down the field a little bit. Um, a curl, you know, if he's got all kinds of space, you might hit that. But let's see what uh, number 14 for better decides to do. So you see TCU showing a blitz on third and 15, but they are bluffing. So it's just a four man rush. And he decides to take off. And really, if you look down the field, um, there's not a whole lot to look at. Let's try it again as far as that goes. Um, he does have a one-on-one -on -one with his vertical. If he wants to throw it, he gets some pressure, so he steps up. Um, doesn't want to force it. This bender is sandwiched. Um, it's a big mess over here. Again, these two receivers really aren't running to get open. So it tells you again that he's looking at this side of the field. He takes off and does not get the first down, but he almost does makes it fourth and short. And Baylor, especially in 2014, was very aggressive with their offense. They're going to go for it. So again, good job picking up the twist stunt here with their protection. But the tackles, um, the ends get past the tackle. Not really protection of pushing them beyond the quarterback. He steps up, and he decides to commit to the run immediately. Didn't have much downfield. So um, doesn't get the first down. But on third and 15, that's a dangerous play. I don't like quarterbacks forcing the ball. So. Not a bad play by number 14. In fact, it's going to pay off. Fourth down, they're going to go to a pre-snap RPO that they ran just moments ago, but go the other way. And they're going to run dart. And they're going to look to uh, pull their right tackle. And they have the quick screens on the outside. Uh, let's see how it works out for them. Just two minutes into the game, and they're going for it in their own territory. you got to love the confidence. And they run dart. And this time, the quarterback doesn't even look at his quick screens, gives it, and it's a big game. Um, this one is not blocked as cleanly as the previous one, but still looks really good. They get the down blocks, get a kick out right here. The hole to pull through is not the best, as you see, gets caught up, but he does get his block at the last second. The running back is very patient. That's what I would take if I was going to show a player this, how patient that running back is to wait for the hole to develop. So a big first down for Baylor in the opening drive. Back to the empty set with some stacks on the outside. Again, going vertical, taking shots down the field. That is the, that is the MO of this offense, especially in this first drive. Um, you can kind of see who's going to have the lazy routes and who's going to be more aggressive. So post route. It takes a deep shot and it's just broken up. So he's looking for the outside receiver. Again, with that stack, one of these two guys is usually going vertical and they're trying to put pressure on these guys, on these defenders, the safety in the corner to figure out who that's gonna be. Again, I see an underneath route that looks gold. Um, on first and 10, I like my guys to take that underneath route um, and move the chains, but that is just, that's just not Baylor's philosophy. They're gonna take a deep shot. This dude is a burner. He, you know, and if you look at it, he closes, he cl in, in R4 terminology, he closes the cushion very quickly. So I think that's what the quarterback, he sees that he is closing that cushion and which means that by the time the ball is gets there, he's going to be passing if he is. And it almost goes as a huge completion. But what I would tell my quarterback is it wasn't. It was an incomplete pass, but still you get why they do it. That's the philosophy of their offense. And you see um, the strategy of the TCU defense is do a lot of twists up front, try to confuse the pass protection. But for the most part, they pick it up. They get great depth. Okay, again, look at the depth the offensive line gets. 
clean pocket, really good throw, maybe a little underthrown and just couldn't hold on to it. All right, second down. Now it's going to be the H back or the sniffer who's going to be um, the puller in this situation. Um, still have the quick screen and the, the RPO comes right here um, with this strong safety. Is he going to come down to defend the run or is he going to drop and defend the pass? Nice. Get new personnel in. We got their H back sniffer type right here. So uh, assuming the pre snap RPO is here, which he does not like, he's got two defenders under five yards or what some would call the hard deck. Again, our four term. So now you see his eyes go straight to the safety. Safety does not crash here. Okay, I want you to note that he does not just crash to defend the run, but he also does not get any kind of backpedal to defend the pass. And so for number 14, that's enough. He's gonna throw the slant, gold. All right, easy read, one man read for the quarterback. Just the patience of their running game. What I note on these RPOs is the patience of the quarterback and the running back to not get in a big hurry. Let the pull up play develop. And again, they've got a big running play if they want it. All right, there's a hole there. We'll see it in a second. But they also have a big passing play. Big gain inside the 30. So look at it from the RP, from the run game RPO. Again, if, now if, if he gets to this hole right here, um, he's got a big play. But that's not his read. His read is the strong safety that I had labeled. So uh, he goes with that. Completes it. Patience lets him clear. Good throw. For me as a high school coach, um, it's kind of why I'm not as big an RPO as some people. Um, this is a big time college throw that he makes right here. If your guy can make those throws a lot, go with it. But um, sometimes I prefer to take that run if that's me. All right, so the Bears have found something in their run game. So they're going to stick with it. All right, now we've got a different type of different route on the RPO. Somehow they tagged a different one. Otherwise, kind of the same play. Again, note pre-snap. This time the safety is a little deeper and he does not give um, any kind of read. He just stands there. He's not even going forward. I don't know if that's by design or not. It could be to kind of mess with the quarterback's read. He really has a good, a good read in the RPO if he wants it with the flat-footed safety. You see his eyes at the snap, go to the safety. He's going to get a little inside release, um, vertical route right here. But it gives it off on the, again behind the puller. And I want you to notice the puller is going to come outside, and I'm, this should be his man, I mean, based on numbers. And he misses it, so it's going to be a, a loss. One of the few times in this game that TCU tackles him for a loss. But if he goes in this hole and gets this block again, you've got a big play, only one man to make the tackle, number 54, who really has his eyes in the backfield and seems to be a little, uh, a little fooled. Number one, again, just flat-footed. Um, you see his eyes are right on him. And I guess with the with the no um, with no read of any kind, he gives it off. And this time they don't block it right. They're going to adjust the blocking later in the game. Now this is the only time I've really seen the look the look they give here. A quick screen with kind of an outside zone look. I mean, this play doesn't hit very well either. Um, I drew the tight end like again, kind of going to air. They the communication here I think is a is a so something ha something happens they don't like, and so they're going to apparently they're going to scrap this play because it doesn't quite look right. So now you've got a tight end on the left. And again, look, the play looks good. You've got, you've got numbers over here, or you've at least got four on four, um, which is good numbers. And it's kind of, an, kind of a, wide, a wide zone blocking scheme. The running back's going to kind of stay out here, or stay tight anyway to the formation, excuse me. And again, it's two on one right here. Nobody's really blocking anybody, and they leave a man on the inside. So again, I got to think there's a mistake there. Very little gain. Really here, look, yeah, you've got kind of the, you get the three on three look. So the numbers look good. But again, I'm not sure what the guard here, or excuse me, that's the tackle. I'm not sure where the tackle is assignment is supposed to be. It would make the most sense that he would come to 54 and it might have a good play. They get double team right here. But again, play kind of backfire. So nothing really there for them to look at. That played, again, they scrap it. Um, Decided to go with what they had been doing. Third down, and you're going to get a little bit of a shallow concept from the boundary, from the outside receiver. He's going a little bit deeper than a true shallow. And then you've got just a little shake and a, and a curl route. Um, and here's one of the few straight dropbacks you'll see from Baylor in this game. And just a 
basic two by two set and TCU and pretty kind of in their base defense, a little more of a four three look right here with only one backer in there. Straight drop. And there's the shallow curl. He's he is he's got great leverage on the curl. This little shaker out um, could be trouble. There's not much brewing here really for them. This little kind of flat corner route. Uh, if he wants to throw it way to the like to the 21 yard line here has a chance, but that could be dangerous. See, he looks at the shallow, doesn't like it. And so, and eventually the play breaks down. So, um, and again, on third down, you don't want to take a sack, obviously. You don't want to throw a pick either. Um, and and the, a little bit of the background from this game as I researched it, uh, T, or, excuse me, Baylor's kicker was one for six going in. So I don't think they're thinking field goal at this point anyway, but you don't want to take a sack um, in field goal range. So, all right, so fourth down, they're going to go for it again. They, um, a post corner look with a kind of a deep smash concept um, to the weak side and the post and a, and a curl behind it. So just, again, yeah, if you're going to get the first down, you have to throw either that to the H or the Y uh, in my drawing. So let's see how that looks for them. Okay, fourth down. All right, you get, they get to a three front defensively and they're going to drop eight in the coverage, which is pretty smart. Sometimes that, that can be deadly, but look, I mean, look at the white shirts. I mean, that's pretty smart defense. And 14 drops back. Again, the ends get um, around the tackles a little bit. He does the right thing of stepping up. And he's looking over the middle here, which is going to be dangerous anyway, and gets hit when he throws incomplete. So really, with the two bad running plays, this drive breaks down. And you see, again, where Baylor has the potential to move the football. But in this opening drive, that doesn't happen. And TCU is pretty fired up. They got a good stop defensively. They got to feel pretty good about it. Let's do one more drive. Let's do this drive without the play sheet. We'll just go right, right off the film. See a tight end um, right here with a single receiver. He's going to have a vertical, and I like it with the press and the safety inside the hash, nine yards off, knowing the speed of the Baylor, Baylor um, the receivers. Now, now TC is going to pull the guard, and this is going to be their MO for the rest of the game. Now, look at the hole the running back misses. Now, he, he's taught to follow the puller, but uh, boy, the hole he misses there, pretty big. But again, he's doing what he's taught. He's doing the technique correctly, but um, we're in a little bit of a version of power. And again, the, the hole is there. Need to put his foot in the ground and cut back, but doesn't get it done. So Baylor's so close in the running game, they still got to make a few adjustments. Second down and nine. You can see this time not in a big hurry. This is kind of as they're feeling out what to do. The first drive was scripted. This one is more, I'm assuming, based off the TCU defense. Some motion, which you don't see a whole lot of. But looking for this curl route. Pretty confident that when he goes in, when he moves with the motion, that opens up the window for this curl and that number 14 for Baylor knows where he wants to throw it right now. I think he already knows. Look at it, sets his feet. He knows where he wants to go pretty much as that happens with the motion. First down, easy throw and catch. One man read. Um, now, if, uh, if he does not go with the motion, If you look at it, it's only a two-man route. I mean, so that that is um, very interesting. That um, so if if that does not happen, I guess he's going to dump it off. Or I mean, this re receiver is not giving much effort. So, um, kind of putting all. I think they know what TCU TCU is going to do defensively there. But um, one man one man read makes the throw first down. And note that the linemen are going into pass protection here. They are not going into any kind of blocking scheme uh, for an outside zone. So this is not a read on the, uh, on the, what some people call bash or dash, not a read there. He is throwing this curl route. Simple though. And that's game plan and that, and that's scouting. You know what they're gonna, your opponent's gonna do, make it happen. Okay, sniffer back still in there. TCU does send a blitz this time and it's a triple option by the quarterback, he ends up getting a good gain. So just to keep him honest, some people call this a constraint play. Be sure that they have to respect your ability to run. Okay, you've got your puller. Quarterback keeps it. Now he has the option to do what I call a flip right here, but he chooses to keep it with this defender here. Now, if he really wants to get cute, he could have thrown it right there. It would have been pretty, pretty nasty little play right there, but he keeps it. 
Pray does the safe thing, gets a good block, and gets some yards. So if you have an athlete at quarterback, you can run that play. Um, it's kind of an inside zone flip. That's one of the few times you see them run the zone blocking. And to me, it looked like it, it definitely was a designed um, triple option type play. Okay, here's a puller. This time he busts it and starting to get some yards in the running game. And a little spoiler alert, although look, they fumbled it. A little spoiler alert that they're going to make their big comeback in the fourth quarter on the ground more than in the air. They, they do that. They do hit some deep shots. Great job by this puller to, to be patient with it. Gets pretty athletic. That's why he's a Division I um, offensive lineman right there. Ball comes out late. If you watch it from the – so two drives from Baylor. Just kind of see how they're beginning to construct their offense. You can take some great things from this already, um, just the aggressiveness of their offense. And the next video, we'll talk about the comeback, all right? Baylor's big comeback. Again, um, if you're interested in playbooks, look below. Come back to the next one. I'm going to work on that one in the next few days. Hope to see you.